In this video, I want to show you how you can add callouts to, uh, in this example, it's an image, but it could be a graph, it could be a diagram, it uh, really could be anything uh, on your slide. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing some different types of callouts. This is one of the built in callout shapes, or if you want to have sort of an arrow or something around a shape. So, how do we do this in Google Slides? So I'm going to go to a blank slide here and the first one I want to show you is adding one of those built-in callouts. So it's one of the built-in shapes here in the callouts area and you'll notice we have some uh, bubble callout shapes here. So I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle callout. And I'm going to draw it and then the yellow diamond here you can grab that and that will direct the pointer of that callout. Now because this is a shape you can set the line color and the fill color. So I'm going to set the line color to let's say black because that's high contrast with the light gray fill color. You could make the fill color white if you wanted even more contrast. And then you can add text. Now you will have to see if the text is going to be too big for the shape size that you've drawn. And if I say oh maybe it's going to be a little too big I can adjust this. Notice when you adjust the shape the pointer moves. So always make sure that you keep an eye on that. So I'm going to type in adjustable feet and it happens to fit in. Now if you need to make the text smaller you can just highlight it and choose the font size. For the arrow we're going to use a shape which is in the arrows collection and it is this one here which is uh, called a pentagon. Now you can't draw it on an angle you can only draw it horizontally and then you have to rotate it. So I'm going to draw it horizontally and what you're going to want to do is to make the pointer part of it a little stronger. So there's a another yellow diamond. We could drag that back. Makes the arrow a little more prominent and then we can make it a little thinner so that it's not quite so heavy. With this particular shape you're going to want to have contrast between the fill color and the outline color so that it is seen on any background, even a photograph that has light and dark background parts. So the best way to do that I've found is set the fill color to be the bright yellow and the outline color to be black and the thickness at least two points. Now you may need to go a little thicker depending, but now we can use the rotation handle to rotate the arrow and then drag it into the position we want it to be. And now you can see that arrow regardless of what the background image is. And the final type of callout I want to show is, is how do we place something around let's say this part here. Well we're going to use a rounded rectangle though you could use a regular rectangle as well. I'm going to start by drawing the rounded rectangle around the area that I want. Now we need the contrast just like we had it here but with a rectangle shape you only have one line and a fill color. You don't have two lines. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to use a bit of a trick where we're going to have two rounded rectangles, one on top of the other, to create this effect. So I'm going to start by setting the fill color of this one to be transparent. I'm going to set the line color to the bright yellow and I'm going to set the thickness to four points. Now if you just look at that shape now it's not always easily visible in all areas so we need to have that contrast. What we're going to do is we're going to select that shape and we're going to copy it. So I'm just going to say copy and then paste and I get another copy of it and I don't want to change the size. All I want to do is I want to change the line color to black and the thickness to eight points. So you notice it's double what the previous one was. Now I need this black rectangle to be behind, exactly behind, that yellow rectangle. So what I'm going to do, having still selected this black rectangle, I'm going to use the Arrange menu and say in order, I want to say Send it backward, meaning one layer back. Now you see it's behind that yellow rectangle. Now I need to select both of these rectangles. So I've selected the first one, I'll control click on the second one. Now I've got both of them selected and on that arrange menu I'm going to align them horizontally to the center which brings them center alignment horizontally and then align them vertically in the middle. Now they're exactly on top of each other. Now I want to put them together as a group so I can move them in the future. Under arrange I'll say group.
And now, because it's one shape, I can move it, and that callout's going to be seen no matter what the background is. So those are some of the callouts you can use within Google Slides. Now, when you want to go to more of a professional set of tools in PowerPoint, here are some of the things you can do. So this is an example from PowerPoint. You'll notice it has callout shapes, but you can set the fill color to be semi-transparent so you don't lose the image underneath. It also has other types of built-in callouts. This one here has text and then just a single line. Instead of having to use the pentagon shape, in PowerPoint you can use an arrow and then add a feature called a glow, which adds the black glow around it which is more flexible and is easier to create. And similar with the rounded rectangle, you don't need two of them, you only need one. So those are some of the advanced features that you can use when you use PowerPoint.